Hey, how's it going? Another reaction episode where we're diving into that 70s show season two episode number 14 called red gets a job my god this is like the third title that we got from the show that was doing with something along the lines with red and a job so hopefully you've been enjoying the series hopefully you are having a wonderful day don't forget to like comment subscribe head on over to patreon for full uncut unedited reactions over there episodes well that being said buckle your seat belts Let's ride. Actually, I feel like talking. Oh, okay, yeah, I'll try anything once. Yo, he is ridiculous. <laughs> Great. Yeah, super. Got a whole other girlfriend. This price mark could put me out of business. Hey, they're hiring. Who's that? Where is that food? Eric. You should give your refrigerator to people who have food. <laughs> Damn, sense. Hamburger. That's fortunate. We're just on a budget. Well, it is a hell of a tiny budget. <laughs> no one says you guys have to chill here funny, and eat that. here. Get out of here. Right, Donna? Actually, Kelso. You know what really makes you horny? Beats. <laughs> He's about to eat those beats now. <laughs> Michael, honey, don't eat our beats. <laughs> <laughs> On a tiny budget yeah, here, Michael, man. Tiny budget. Right, you're horny enough. And I guess I've just been too concerned with the needs of others, and I haven't thought enough about myself. Kelsa? Yeah. Yeah. Listen. What do you think? So what do you think? I know it. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, Lee, we both want a sexually emotional relationship. <laughs> she is not into it. Look at her. This price mark looks like a heck of an outfit, Kitty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe I should go down there and get a job, too. Eric, when your father's in a good mood, what do I say? No talking? Thank you. No, keep quiet. I was literally about to say, keep quiet. Your job. Also to be my precious little baby boy. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, we talked about this. I'm not a boy anymore. I'm a man. He's a man. <laughs> Shut up, Hyde. I am a man. <laughs> so, uh, Red Ted, that's pretty funny, though. <laughs> Second thought, it's not that funny. Just take the cashier job, dude. Uh oh. There it is, Wait, right. wait, wait. Let it ring. You don't want to seem desperate. Right. Eric, if this is one of your dumbass friends, you better start running. <laughs> Please don't be Kelsey. Fingers crossed. Hello? It's Price Mark. What are you doing, Red? Yes. <laughs> this Didn't is hang up? Resident. That way I can have your room after Red kills you. <laughs> Although I'm not sure an ass hat is fatal. <laughs> you know what would be a good job for me? Gigolo. Let's see it. The loving is over. Now pay me. Let's see it. <laughs> you know, I'll just wait quietly until you and Lori are done. Have fun. <laughs> well, thanks, babe. <laughs> no, feel free to jump in. <laughs> So you mind if I join in your sexy circle too? What the heck? <laughs> Work. I mean, yeah, I'm a real bad boy, Donna. My big teenage rebellion is to get a job. Ooh, you right. Know I don't quite do understand it. Just because he doesn't oh God, have a job. Out. He's got insurance. <laughs> <laughs> He's got insurance. You know what? Have you seen Calso? Well, I guess I have. He's hiding from you in the shower. Oh! Wow! <laughs> Eric! Hi. Guess what? I just found my eighth grade diary. Come on, I'll read it to you. Great! Hey, Foreman! Oh, my God. <laughs> Good news, right? massive hit. I just... Well, wait a minute, honey. 
You know what? We can split a bottle of wine and I'll, I'll give number three a shot. <laughs> <laughs> Thought about it. It's a close one. You think that's funny? Well, you know, maybe not in the traditional ha ha sense, but. You know, <laughs> look, I've got to go. You know, you're going to look real funny when you're wearing your, your ass, ass for a hat. For a hat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you got it. That's a pretty big decision to make all on your own. Maybe you and me and Jackie should all get together and discuss it. Uh, you uh. Really? Look at me, Kelso. Look into my eyes. <laughs> Yo, she controls. Mom, how come we have to be here? I could be using this time to not be here. <laughs> to do anything no, else. This is a very difficult day for your father, and he needs to be with his family. I'll be in the basement. No, you sit. <laughs> oh, sure. When things get ugly, suddenly I'm family. No, he's got it, guys. Not to me, freak. <laughs> You are so going to end up in porno. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. Eric. Go. And you're fired. <laughs> Funny. No, I'm not. What? You can't do that. Yes, I can. You're fired. <laughs> the oldest rule in the book, get Eric. Old, <laughs> well, if it isn't Benedict and Arnold. Bob. I wow, needed that wow. job, and if you can't get that, well, I'm sorry, you're a dumbass. <laughs> Look, they misspelled price mark. You want to keep that finger? Uh -huh. Ah. <laughs> oh, man, red invented. Come on, Eric, you spilled the beans. Spilled the beans, Eric. All right, episode two. Wow, season two, episode number 14 of that 70s show. One thing that I got from this, this episode is how much more involved they have Lori in, in all these episodes. I mean, most of the time she'll come in season one for an episode here or there. You now she's mostly off in college. And so now that she's not in college and she dropped out, she's been more heavily used in the show. And I feel like for the most part, she's really not that bad. I won't go as far as saying that she's better than the group that we always follow, but she definitely fits in. So, you know, I was really harsh on Lori early on. I thought that her and Midge really were just there to be shown off. At least that's how I took it in season one. And now, you know, we're starting to actually see that there's some some meaning to, behind this character now. Like, she's actually more than just, you know, Eric's mean sister. And so, I actually like her. I liked her in this episode. I felt like even though what she's doing with Kelso is very... Uh, wrong, especially because she knows about it. She doesn't care about it, but she knows about it. She knows he's with Jackie. Kelso, for being with Jackie and doing what he's doing to her, is awful as is. But nonetheless, like I actually saw potential in Lori and the fact that she wasn't just what she's always set out to be. You know, the the whore of the family, the, the dropout. Like Hyde said in this episode, someone that's literally just going to be uh, joining porno soon, you know what I mean? So to sort of see her not want to do stuff with the council, but just simply want an emotional relationship with him. It's cool. I wish it was more of an emotional friendship to lean on as opposed to a relationship, but nonetheless, cool from Lori. I liked it. Uh, but basically the big, the big story of this episode is, you know, a new, Sort of Walmart, if you will, moving into town. Called it Price Mart. It's uh, obviously going to challenge smaller businesses. Probably put them out of business because, you know, they can't overcharge for certain things to stay in the business. And so, you know, Bob's upset about it. But at the end of the day, Red needs to do what he needs to do for his family. And so, you know, he goes for the interview. The guy says, we don't have any positions available or we're not hiring for supervisors technically right now. We'll get you. We'll give you a job as a uh, as a cashier, and he completely does not want it. He turns it down. He's like, "No, that's not me. I'm not a cashier. I'm a supervisor." And it's good in a sense to be confident in yourself. It's good in a sense to be like not to settle and 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 
go beneath yourself if you know what you're worth. But at the same time, you know, take as a humble, like, like it's like humble pie in a sense. Like, okay, you know, I am a supervisor. And you may not know that and you see it in my experience, but I'm going to prove it to you. I'm going to be a cashier. I'm going to come, I'm going to come to work every day on time. I'm going to do what needs to be done and I'll work my way up. And so, you know, Red just wasn't settling for it. Uh, we get a call and find out that Eric went for an interview and he's hired. I'm glad that Red didn't legit fire him. Glad that he simply said, Hey, I'm firing you because I want your grades, not the slip. I want you to focus on. Uh, you know, getting accepted into college, getting a scholarship and all that good stuff. Like he wants better for his son. So I don't, I don't uh, fault him for that, but I'm glad that he's letting him, you know, be responsible enough. You know, he obviously gave him the car in season one. Now he's, uh, you know, allowing him to have a job while still going to school. It's going to teach Eric a lot of responsibility at a young age. So I'm cool with red doing that as well. Uh, and then the other big thing, obviously, like I said, is Kelso and Lori and how, you know, they're at the beginning of the episode. They were going to be doing things, but Lori was like, I don't want to hook up. I just want to talk to you. Uh, the little circle session was really fun as well. You know, we got a little skit out of it. I didn't think we would do something like that. So that was interesting. As well, not very much. Uh, it was just so heavily favored with Lori Kelso. I wouldn't even say that much Jackie in this episode. And then. On the other hand, it was mostly just red uh, with a little hint of Eric here and there. We didn't get much of Donna. We got a little bit of Bob, which is probably about usually what we get from him. We had no Midge. Uh, but nonetheless, I think the episode deserves an eight. I enjoyed it. There wasn't anything dull about it. It was fun throughout the entire episode. And I literally have nothing to complain about. Like It, it was a good episode throughout the whole episode. It was fun. Like I said, now I have this like weird, I'm okay with Lori now. I didn't like Lori in the first season. Obviously, you know, I jumped it and, and, and straight up just thought this is the character she's going to be. And it really was, at least to me, it just felt like all, like, like now her outfits are better. She's wearing like normal clothes. It seems as though they're not going the route of like having her and Midge just be bra, braless all the time. And so, like, her outfits this this episode was cool. Like, she was just wearing regular regular T-shirts, regular nice, like, sweatshirts. And see, like, like the, now they're letting her character be something more than just pretty face and boobs. You know what I mean? And so, that's why, like, for some reason, like, I'm like, hey, see, like, Lori actually has substance there. Like, it's, she's just not, like, again, the hot blonde that you know, just has her boobs out all the time and says, you know, really mean things to, to Eric. Like, there's actually some meaning behind her. So, like, that was actually really cool. But that's the episode. Hopefully, you enjoyed the review. Hopefully, you enjoyed the reaction. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Head on over to Patreon for uncut, unedited reactions over the episode extra early over there as well. With that being said, I'll catch you guys later. Peace.